This offers a new chance for volatility in the markets, which for me means opportunity. Remember, volatility equals opportunity if you know how to read the charts. Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway shares his latest analysis as he anticipates the Fed's rate cut and its impact on the Bitcoin price action. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin price may be faced with more downside pressure ahead of the United States Federal Reserve's September 18 interest rate decision after losing the key $60,000 support. The incoming decision could introduce more price volatility for the world's first cryptocurrency, depending on which way it goes, according to Bitfinex analysts who told Cointelegraph. Depending on whether the rate cut is 25 basis points or 50 basis points, market behavior could swing between bullish optimism and cautious de-risking in response to major macroeconomic adjustments. This expected volatility might be reflected in flows across EDFs and perpetual markets, which are likely to exhibit increased fluctuations. All right, let's get into the markets right away here, folks. S&P 500 pre-market is moving higher. Take a look at this, guys. So this is four in the morning right here. You can see the market's chopping sideways. We did come up here. Notice this trend line on the 10-minute chart. So we're on the 10-minute chart here. Look at that trend line getting tagged, reversing. That's when retail sales came out this morning stronger than expected. So again, not much of an impact there, but it's one thing that may say, all right, will the Fed continue to cut rates aggressively if we still see a consumer that's strong and if the other economic factors remain strong as well but this trend line I want to show you this guys let's flip over to the daily chart and take a look here this trend line marks the all-time high on the S&P 500 so very clearly there's your previous pivot top and pre-market if again this is the daily so it's not showing the the, the action pre-market but right here is where we're trading right into that level at a double top on the S&P 500 now Remember, if you've been following, if you're a daily watcher, number one, congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Number two, remember that in 2007, the markets did exactly this. They made a new all-time high on the S&P 500 for about three to five trading days before the bigger down move in 08, 09 took place. So just keep that in your back pocket. Be more alert. And I want to tell you guys something so important. The institutions out there, they're lurking. They're trying to get everyone in this market. This is why markets make new all-time highs before big collapses, because they want to get all the retail money in. By doing that, they're getting you in, and you become the bag holder when it falls. And you know when most people get out of the markets? When the markets go so low that the pain is unbearable, a la 09, in early 09, that collapse happened. A lot of people lost their retirement. They had to go back to work, and they actually un ended up throwing in the towel just at the lows. You know who was buying down there? Institutions. Just p putting the, all those shares in their pockets, accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. So this is the stuff that I walk you through. The institutional know-how, the institutional tactics and secrets. That's what I'm dedicating my life here at Verified Investing to making sure you guys at least have a little bit of an edge understanding the games that are played. All right. Let's go to another chart here. This is an amazing chart. I've shown this once before, but I gotta show it again. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average chart going back to 1897. 1897 all the way back here. Here's your high pivot. All right, I don't even know if you guys can see this all the way over here. This is from 1897 right here all the way to current times over there. Notice the 1897 high. This is the high just before the stock market crash and the Great Depression. Goes right through your 2000, uh, 1999 com high. And look at what we're butting up to. Here's your 21, 2021 high right here. And here's your 2024 high on the Dow. Now, I am using a logarithmic chart. So if you want to replicate this at home and show your buddies, more than happy to let you guys do that. Go for it. Make yourselves look like you're really cool. Because I love, at least for me, this is cool stuff. But in any case, this again is a major resistance point that I'm following like a hawk based on the fact that you had such major collapses dot-com collapse right there the Great Depression right there right I mean major hits of this trend line ultimately resulted in big moves to the downside so again remember 
What I talk about in these game plans, it doesn't necessarily guarantee it's going to come, but I'm one of those people, and I know you guys are. If you're tuning into this, you're the same way as me. You want to know what could happen. What are What's a possibility? Because there's a lot of people out there in this world that just want to put their head in the sand, and then they want to forget about it and say, hey, listen, if I don't know about it, it doesn't matter to me. I'll just go about it. And those are the people that get burned in bad situations. I'd much rather know every situation that's a possibility and at least allocate, distribute, um, you know, have a portfolio that protects me in any scenarios. It's why I have solar on my roof because I have battery backups. I can run off the grid if I need to. It's why I had a deep well drilled on my property so I have water if something were to happen in those situations. It's why I have fruit trees in my yard and a garden is to be prepared just in case anything happens. Hopefully none of that ever matters. Hopefully I spent that money and it's not a big deal. Granted, I'm getting paid back by not having an electric bill, but still, the idea is to be prepared for anything that comes. All right, so let's get into some other things right here, folks. What I wanna show you, we're gonna go to the Fed Watch tool on our website, and really, honestly, I'm, I'm checking this Fed Watch tool like three, four times a day now, because it's that important going into the Fed meeting. So if we come down right here and we click on the Fed Watch tool, we can look at what the probabilities are going into tomorrow's meeting. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change my line to being a, a black line so that we can uh, see it on the white background, but right now, it's a 67% chance of a 50 basis point cut. All right, there's a 33% chance of just a 25% cut, or right, a 25 basis point cut, excuse me. Uh, the key is this is the most likely outcome. And remember, everything we do here at Verified Investing is probability based, just giving you the flat out odds. You guys make up your mind. If you want to go with probabilities, that's how I do it. That's how we make money here by trading based off probabilities. But that again is telling us that the Fed is most likely going to be cutting tomorrow by 50 basis points. Well, we flip over to the daily chart and we take a look. Well, again, yesterday, uh, Intel was up on a $3.5 billion uh, grant from the US government. Um, today, it's up on this AWS news. If we look at the resistance line right here, it's very, very clear that there is a level, but it's not until $24.75 to $25. Where does this line come from? Zoom out, and you can see very clearly where I came up with this line. So if we look at this, right? You have a major pivot low going back to 2022 right here, okay? And if we look at that again, we draw that in, here we go, there and there, and stretch that line out. If price rallies up into that level, that will be a day tradable level. Now, would I swing trade short this? Would I, would I buy it here? No, I don't buy stocks that have rallied 10, 15% in two days. I just don't do it. It's a cardinal sin in investing. I never chase. You chase, that's the people that buying Bitcoin at 69,000 before it went to 15,000. All right, but what do I do is I start looking at resistance levels. This would be a day trade level right here. This gap fill up here around 29 would be a swing trade short level. Now, if it pulls back, potentially a buyable level down at double bottom down there. So there's always opportunities but you isolate down the levels in the charts and then you wait and you stay disciplined. Disciplined traders make money, undisciplined traders lose money. It's just that simple. All right, let's go on. On to the next chart here as we go through. Microsoft is rallying this morning a little bit to the upside. You can see right here, it is trading up. Let's see here, where is it trading? Right around just below 440. So you can see again, it's been trending up. The stock was stuck kind of underperforming recently, well, guess what? The company comes out and says, hey, we're gonna hike our dividend, we're gonna do a buyback. It's a classic. When stocks start to struggle, what's the easiest way to get things moving? Do a buyback. Let's just buy back some shares. Because remember, when you buy back, and by the way, this is one of those games that institutions and, and, and stock companies or public companies play. When you buy back stock, you decrease the amount of, of shares that are in the company. Therefore, even if you make the same amount of money, your earnings per share go up. Think about that. I'll go into that in some video at some point to explain it more. But again, it's essentially artificial financial engineering at its best. Not to say that companies shouldn't do it, but again, just understand it is what it is. In any case, we're seeing Microsoft up today on the charts here. If we go to your daily, look at this. We have a parallel channel right here. And I find this fascinating because here's your parallel channel, right? You have your lines here, here, and here, and here, all the way through, right through here, right here. Here we kissed it, got rejected. Now, today we're gonna open up right around that line, right around 440, and I'm very curious if it gets rejected again. Now, technically speaking, what type of pattern is this? Well, it's a bear flag. So even though they're announcing good news, 
all right, for the stock, even with the move up now, which is only about 1.5 to 2%. But again, for Microsoft, that's a pretty big move. But notice what's the pattern here? Down move, here's your down move. And then look at this sideways chop, right? What type of pattern is that? Right, what, what ends up happening probability wise? Eventually it leads to another leg down. So this is bearish consolidation, even with today's move up, um, coming up under the underbelly of a parallel channel that it had broken down. I would actually be inclined to short this move at 440 or just above and look for a bigger swing trade to the downside. Not day trade, mind you. This would be a swing trade. This is a daily chart with a bigger pattern formation. It would be likely a good shortable level on Microsoft. Let's get right into Bitcoin here, guys, and we're going to go into Bitcoin's action and cover a few things here. Uh, Bitcoin on the daily chart. Let's bring that up. There we go. So we talked about Bitcoin when I looked at the heat map of being higher on the day. You can see your bullish bearish pivot line. You came right up underneath that. You backed off three days. Now you're getting a bounce. Tomorrow's Fed decision is going to be huge, not only for the stock market, but for crypto, for gold, the dollar, the 10 year yield. All of these will be major of, of major importance or big movers off of this Fed decision. In fact, I would say this. This is the first Fed decision. Number one, it's the first cut of this new cycle that we're in. But it's also a question mark of 50 to 25. Right. So it's not just, oh, they're going to cut by X amount. It's everyone knows it. Right. Where a lot of times when they weren't raising rates, we all knew they weren't going to raise rates. This is a little different. This offers a new chance for volatility in the markets, which for me means opportunity. Remember, volatility equals opportunity if you know how to read the charts. So we're going to watch very closely the pivot line. If it flushes, I have major support right down here around 52,800. But again, let's watch our crypto charts here as we get into the action. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.